hey what's up you guys thank you for joining me again now in this video we are going to be covering everything you need to know about the second subtopic of chapter 7 which is parallel lines and perpendicular lines so without further ado let us jump right in Now for this chapter, right, there's only two main things that you have to know. And apart from that are some of the things that you have learned from the past. So the two main things you have to learn is number one, you have to know the characteristic of parallel lines. So for parallel lines, if you have two parallel lines, for example, the characteristic of parallel lines are M1, which is the gradient for line one, is equal to the gradient of m2 the gradient of line 2 so in other words the gradient for both parallel lines should be the same so this is one characteristic that you have to know okay the second thing you have to know is for perpendicular line perpendicular lines now parallel lines they have same gradient but perpendicular lines they don't have the same gradient but what you what you know from here is that when you multiply both gradients, you should get negative 1. That is the characteristic of a perpendicular line. So in other words, M1, M2 should be equal to negative 1. Okay, they are perpendicular. Now these are the main things that you have to know. Apart from these are some of the things that you have learned in the past. So for example, I'm sure you have learned about gradient, correct? How do you find gradient gradient stands we use ms uh, to stand for gradient so gradient how do you find gradient so there are a few formulas to find gradient the first one is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 now if you don't remember this don't worry later in the examples i'll cover okay so this is the first uh, formula for uh, gradient the second formula is negative y over x now you only use this when you are given the y-intercept and the x-intercept, okay? So you substitute the y-intercept as y here and the x-intercept as the x-value, okay? And the top one here is actually when you're given two coordinates, two separate coordinates, which does not lie on the y-intercept or x-intercept. If that's the case, then you will use the first formula. So this is, you have probably learned this in the past, right? Gradient formula. The next thing you have to learn is, number four, you must know how to form your equation these are by the way these are things that you have already learned in the past i'm just trying to recap because you'll be using all of this in the examples later so how to form equation there are the first one is using y equals to mx plus c you must know this because you will be using a lot of this later on how to find the gradient using the formula here and you will have to also find the y-intercept so c stands for c is the y-intercept okay so this is one way sometimes they give you this is general form okay y equals to mx plus c is general form sometimes the question will give you intercept form so intercept form is like this x over a plus y over b equals to one make sure this is equals to one okay so this is what we call as intercept form if you are given this equation, the a value here would be the x-intercept, the y, sorry, the b value would be the y-intercept, okay? So since you have y-intercept and x-intercept, you can also find the gradient. What's the gradient? Negative y over x, negative y over x. So what is y value? Y value is b. So negative b over x-intercept is a. So if you are given intercept form, remember, you will use this to find your gradient. Clear? So that's about it. All right. So let us go straight to the examples. Determine whether the following pairs of straight lines are parallel or perpendicular to each other. So like I said, if it is parallel, remember, the two gradients should be the same. M1 equals M2. If it's perpendicular, M1, the first line, multiply by the second line you should get negative one so these are the characteristic 
So we're going to test this out. So you got the first equation here. So here is question A, this is question B, okay? Two separate questions. So let's solve A first. So you have 2x plus 3y equals to 9. So you have 3y. I'm going to change this in the form of y equals to mx plus c. Once I change this, I can know what's the gradient. So I'm going to shift the, neg the 2. So you get negative 2 plus 9. And then divide the whole thing by 3. So I get negative 2 over 3 x plus 3 okay so this is your first equation so your m1 here the first gradient is negative 2 over 3 next you have 4x plus 6y equals to 0 so 6y equals to negative 4x and y is equals to negative 4 over 6x so you can simplify this you should get negative 2 over 3 x okay so what what do you know from here is m2 is also equals to negative 2 over 3 so since m1 is equals to m2 you can say that both these lines are parallel lines okay next question b so you have the first equation x minus 2y equals to 6 so I'm going to shift this to the other side and shift the 6 to this side because I want to keep the y as positive, right? So x minus 6 equals to 2y. Then divide the whole thing by 2. So I should get 1 over 2x minus 3 equals to y. Okay, so I just rearrange this. I should get like this. Okay, now the second equation 2x plus y equals to 5. So shift the 2x there, negative 2x plus 5, that's it. So the gradient for first equation is 1 over 2, and the gradient for the second equation is negative 2. So from here, you know it's not parallel lines, but we have to check, is it going to be perpendicular line? So remember, m1 times m2, let's check, is it equals to negative 1? So m1 is 1 over 2, multiply by m2 is negative 2. So you cut cut you get negative one so therefore these two equations these two lines are perpendicular lines okay next the following pairs of straight lines are perpendicular to each other find the value of constant k so they are telling you these two equations are perpendicular so when it's perpendicular remember what's the Characteristic is m1 times m2 should be equals to negative 1. So you got two equations here, right? So we want to arrange this into y equals to mx plus c so that we can find what is the gradient for both the lines, okay? So your first one here, 3x plus 5y equals to 15. So 5y is equals to negative 3x plus 15. So y is equals to negative 3 over 5x plus 3 okay so from here you know the first gradient here is negative 3 over 5 okay next you have the second equation so i'm going to shift the y to the opposite side so i get 5x minus 2 equals to ky and then i'm going to divide everything by k so i get 5 over k x minus 2 equals to y so let me just rearrange this so from here you know that m2 the second gradient is 5 over k so since we know for the characteristic of perpendicular line is what m1 times m2 equals to negative 1 so to find k we have to substitute and find the value of the unknown so negative 5 over 3 is m1 yeah, sorry, negative 3 over 5. And then m2 is 5 over k. Equals to negative 1. So here you can actually cut. So you get 1 over k is equals to 1 over 3. So your k value is actually equals to 3. Alright, next. So question B. So you have x over... Okay, so this is special because they gave you what? This is a intercept form so remember what's the format x over a plus 
y over b equals to 1. Correct? So you, you are given the correct format. So when you have the correct format, remember, what's the gradient? Gradient is negative b over a. So in this case, the b is what? From the equation, b is 9. So negative 9 over 3. Answer is negative 3. So this is your first gradient. Next, ky equals to 2x minus 7. So divide the whole thing by k. You should get 2 over kx minus 7. Sorry, minus 7 over k. So your gradient 2 here is what? 2 over k. So now you can do the same thing. m1 times m2 equals to negative 1. So m1 is negative 3 times 2 over k equals to negative 1. So 2 over k is equals to 1 over 3 again. Now I'm, I can flip this. So I get k over 2 equals to 3. So what is k? k is equals to 3 times 2 is 6. So this is your answer. Next. The vertices of a triangle ABC are... Okay, so they give you the three vertices of the triangle. Find the value of constant A if AB is perpendicular to BC. So now, since they say it's perpendicular, you know it's going to be a right angle triangle, correct? Because there are no other triangle that has a 90 degree other than a right angle triangle. So since it's a right angle triangle... Okay, by the way, there is no need for you to plot this on a Cartesian plane, right? As long as you know which is perpendicular to which, you can already solve. You don't have to uh, plot this and see which per which line is perpendicular and so on. There's no need for that. So in this case, since it's a right angle triangle, I'm just going to assume that this is A, because they say AB, right? So AB is here, is perpendicular to BC. Okay, so it's a right angle here. So since it is perpendicular, we know that gradient AB here, and when you multiply by gradient BC, when you multiply, you should get negative 1. So MAB multiplied by MBC, you should get negative 1. So this is something that you should already know. So let's just, let us find one by one, okay? So what's the formula we're going to use to find the gradient? We're going to use M equals to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, okay? So in this case, let us find MAB first. M A B is equals to what? So you use A B here, these two. You can it's up to you which one you want to use as X1 X X1 Y1, which one you want to use as X2 Y2. So in this case I'm just gonna use B minus A. Okay. So 4 minus 1 over negative 1 minus 1. So here you should get 3 over negative 2. Yeah, that's it. So next, you want to find MBC. MBC, we're going to take B and C. So in this case, I'm going to take C minus B, okay? So A minus 4 divided by 5 minus negative 1. So I should get A minus 4 over 6, okay? So now you can substitute. So you substitute here, you should get negative 3 over 2 multiply by a minus 4 over 6 should be equals to negative 1. So I bring the 3 over 2 to the opposite side. I should get A minus 4 over 6 equals to 2 over 3. Okay, so A minus 4 is equals to what? You're going to multiply by 6, so you get 4. Correct? Yeah. So A is equals to 4 plus 4 is 8. So that's how you find the constant A. Alright? In the diagram on the right, radius AB of the Ferris wheel is perpendicular to the tangent of the circle at point B. The equation of the tangent at point B is given 3x, okay? Find the equation of radius AB of the Ferris wheel. So they want you to find equation of the radius. So the radius is here. Okay, so the equation, if you want to find equation, make sure you know y equals to mx plus c. This is the equation. So you need to find the gradient and the y intercept. Now to find this gradient, how do you find this is that since you know the radius is perpendicular to the tangent, you can use find the gradient from the tangent and use the formula 
m1 m2 equals to negative 1 to find the gradient of the radius so in this case they already gave you the equation of the tangent which is 3x plus 2y equals to 48 so we'll start off with that to find the gradient of the radius so in this case 3x plus 2y equals to 48 so i'm going to shift this to make it equal y equals to mx, mx plus c, make it into that format, plus 48, then divide the whole thing by 2. So I should get negative 3 over 2x plus 48 divided by 2, you should get 24. Okay, so from here, you know that the gradient is negative 3 over 2. So now we can find the gradient of the radius because it, we know that it's perpendicular to the radius uh, sorry the gradient of the tangent so m1 m2 equals to negative 1 so the gradient is negative 3 over 2 times the m2 in this case we're going to assume m2 is the radius the gradient gradient of the radius okay so in this case m2 is equals to 2 over 3 okay so this is the gradient of radius okay so now you already found the gradient of the radius how do you find the intercept the intercept you can find by using any coordinate on that line so in this case there is one coordinate on the line which is the point b so we're going to use that so y equals to what's the gradient again 2 over 3 right that's the gradient of the radius m x plus c and we're going to use the coordinate 8 12 so this is the x value of the coordinate and this is the y value right so we're going to substitute here so you get 12 equals to 2 over 3 times 8 plus c okay so we're going to shift 12 minus 16 over 3 equals to c so what's your c value your c value should be 20 over 3 so now you have found your c value so you can already form your equation so equation is y equals to 2 over 3x plus 20 over 3 so this is the equation of radius a b